Good morning, students. This lesson is of class sixth for the subject of history and civics. Chapter eight, the age of the Mauryas, which we will continue from page number 68 of your textbook titled Past and Present 6 and is being submitted to you on 14th December 2020. This voice is of Mili Bhatnagar. Students, we had already studied about the sources of Mauryan Empire, Chandragupta Maurya, Bindusar, and Ashok. In this lecture, we will continue our study about Ashok. Starting from Chandragupta, the Mauryan Empire reached its zenith during the reign of Ashok and his empire spread from Himalayas in the north to Mysore in the south and from Brahmaputra in the east to Hindukush in the northwest. Let us try to understand this through the map of the empire of Ashok. So this, as you can see here, the empire of Ashok. Now the empire of Ashok, this region is the region of the Hindu Kush. This region is the south region. We are talking about Mysore in the south. This is the Himalayan region, which we were talking about. And in the east, we are talking about this region, the region of the Brahmaputra. So the empire of Ashok spread in a big region. It covered a big region. And that is why the Mauryas are credited to have established the first empire in ancient India. Ashoka's Dham. Dhamma is a Prakrit word for the Sanskrit term dharma. It means religious duty. It emphasizes on nonviolence, charity, mercy, truth, tolerance, and purity. It did not involve worship of a god or performance of any sacrifice. Ashok felt that like a father, the king also has a duty to instruct his subjects. His ideas were based on human values from Ashokan edicts we get an idea about Dham. Most of his edicts were in Brahmi script. Students, this is an image of the Brahmi script in which the edicts of Ashok were there. There were several problems in his empire that Ashok wanted to solve by Dhamma. Number one, people in the empire follow different religions. This sometimes led to conflicts. Number two, a large number of animals were sacrificed in the Vedic rituals. Number three, slaves and servants were ill-treated. Number four, there were quarrels in family and amongst neighbors. 
so the main principles of dhamma were as follows number 1 everyone should follow ahimsa that is non violence or non injury to all living beings people should respect their elders number 3 people sh should give gifts to brahmans and monks number 4 each one should accept his fellow being and show respect to others religions number 5 people should live in peace and harmony number 6 people should be gentle with slaves and servants they should be truthful charitable and kind to all means to spread dham ashok adopted the following means to spread dham number 1 ashok appointed officials known as dharm mahamatas or dham mahamatas they went from place to place teaching people about dham number 2 he got his message inscribed on rocks and pillars most of these were in brahmi script and the language was prakrit he also instructed the officials to read his messages to those who could not read it themselves students this is an image of ashokan edict this is rampurva bull capital ashok set an example by strictly following the principles of dham through this he inspired others to do the same he sent messengers to spread ideas about dham and buddhism to different countries ashok took a number of welfare measures to spread his ideas he built roads and rest houses and dug wells he planted trees on both sides of the road he built hospitals for people and animals so ashok definitely tried to improve their conditions let us take a short break You are requested to kindly pause your recording and write the answers for the following questions in your notebooks after listening carefully to them. Number 1 Why did Ashok introduce dham? Number 2 List any two principles of dham number 3 what steps were taken by ashok to spread dham let us discuss the answers now ashok wanted to solve some problems in his empire by introducing dham number 2 two principles of dham to follow ahimsa to respect elders number 3 appointment of dham mahamatas 
he set his personal example and followed dhamma himself students we will first study here about economy of the mauryan empire and study about mauryan administration in the next lecture land revenue was the main source of income for the state it varied from 1/4 to 1/6 of the produce depending upon the fertility of the soil forest water resources mines fisheries fines and taxes on various professions were other sources of income the money which was collected through taxes was spent on paying salaries to officials maintaining the army and doing public welfare activities like building of hospitals roads rest houses etc the mauryan empire had a flourishing trade both internal and external many arts and crafts developed during this period traders and craftsmen were organized into guilds or shrinis that is organization of people who do the same job i repeat traders and craftsmen were organized into guilds or shrinis that is organization of people who do the same job cities like takshila kosambi kashi and patliputra were important centers of trade both internal and external external trade was carried on with rome egypt china and sri lanka traders knew the use of weights and measures they used punch mark coins for transactions students this is the image of the coins of the mauryan period the silver coins of the period were called as kashpan students please read page number 68 69 of your textbook and economy given on page number 71 also complete the following home assignment number 1 correct the following statements 1 2 3 and 4 match the columns give reason for the following 1 with this we end this interactive session thank you